Has James Bradbury lost a step? Stick with me for one second before you assume you know the outcome of this video. If you don't know me, I evaluate things, so give me a little leadway here. On this season, I have to be honest and admit that the underlying data, it does not look very good. He's played in six out of seven contests on the year, and in five out of six of those contests, he's giving up 50% or more of his targets to completions. Not the James Bradbury we've come to know and expect. He hasn't given up a 100-yard game yet, but with that said, he's given up three touchdowns. That's a little concerning for James Bradbury, because this is a guy that really came in here and did the job last season for the Philadelphia Eagles. To add to it, the 102 passer rating that he's given up on the season, it's, it's, it's on the high side, guys. This is not what we have come to expect from the secondary. There's no doubt about that. With that said, I will say this is a really difficult evaluation. This is a really difficult thing to put under the microscope. Five, All five guys have missed at least one game. That's tough for any secondary. When Reed Blankenship is not in there, the uncertainty at the nickel cornerback position at the safety position is having a toll on these corners, both Slay and Bradbury, to be quite honest. So it is a very tough evaluation if I'm going to be real about this. With that said, I know what people are looking at. Man, James Bradbury, bro, this is a really long arm reach and wingspan guy that used to get in there and break up footballs, take the ball away when quarterbacks made a mistake with it. And we just haven't seen that this year. Like, four pass breakups, no interceptions. All right. Let's get it. Let's get to this. What's up, Cerebral Football fans? My name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports. For any of you guys who have been following me for a while, you guys know my affinity towards James Bradbury. I had videos going back to 2020 when he became a free agent from the Carolina Panthers where I wanted to add him to this Philadelphia Eagles second day. My number two guy in this position, guys, would be James Bradbury from the Carolina Panthers. I thought he did pretty well. I think he's a bigger physical guy. I think he's an upgrade over Jalen Mills. And I don't say that lightly because I think Jalen Mills is a good football player. I really I love know. plugging in these tall, physical, long arm reach boundary corners that you see across the NFL. And I thought James Bradbury, he's one of those dudes where you can pair other draft prospects to him. I know that you guys have watched me say, and this was, to be fair, this was before we signed James Bradbury, but I wanted Martin Emerson in that draft, right? Last, this past draft class, I was way up on Julius Brents. I think Julius Brents is one of those guys, and of course he went to Shane Steichen and the Colts, that on the boundary side, he, the underlying talent is there. That guy is very athletically gifted for the position. With that said, when I evaluated Eli Ricks, you guys kind of brought up a scary moment in this channel's history because you're starting to know me very well. Some of you guys, without even realizing what you did, you immediately started saying, like, hey, Steve, would Eli Ricks be a good fit to replace Bradbury as a boundary corner. You're learning how I evaluate players, which is scary as a content creator that you know me this well. Nail, head of the hammer, boom. You just hit the nail on the head, man. Like, it's it's crazy how well you guys are starting to know me because, yes, Eli Ricks, in my opinion, is a natural boundary side cornerback in the NFL. That's what he is. And he's being played out of place as a nickel right now because... Look, he's willing to go in there and fight, and they need bodies, simply put. When I think about boundary corners, the players that come to mind for me when I'm thinking about this are guys like Rasul Douglas, uh, guys such as James Bradbury and Martin Emerson, Brandon Stevens, Trayvon Diggs, and then they use Marshawn Lattimore in New Orleans as a boundary corner, but to be real with you, they're misusing the player. With that said, what I'm going to tell you straightforward is this. Boundary corners are normally, and there's always exceptions to the rule, if you want to know those exceptions, guys, there's players such as Diamador Lenore, Steven Nelson, DJ Reed. Those guys are exceptions to the rule. However, normally speaking, boundary corners are basically going to be six foot plus, 190 plus, normally closer to that 195 mark. We're talking about when they come out of college, guys. Who knows what they are when they're in the league for three or four years? It's a completely different story. And they're normally going to be guys that are going to run around the four, five, 40 mark. They're going to have a pretty good. 10 and 20 split, but it won't be anything like what you'll see on the field side corners. And then they're going to be tough, physical, long, lengthy type dudes, right? You know, six foot plus, 190 pound plus, 32 inch or greater in the arm reach, and normally somewhere around 77 inches or greater in their wingspan. It's normally the telltale signs that you're dealing with a boundary corner. And boundary corners tend to not always have the greatest fluidity in their hips when you look at those lateral testing. 
You can't get away with that on the field side, guys. Normally, when you look at field side corners, now you're talking about a completely different type of athlete. You're talking about like your Jonathan Jones, your Marlon Humphreys, your Jair Alexanders, uh, Denzel Ward, Stephen Gilmore, Darius Slay. Those are field side corners, right? You have got to have a certain athletic profile to play in space like that. You must be a good vertical athlete and lateral athlete to play in space like that. So there are some subtle differences between the two position groups. Getting back to the original question, has James Bradbury lost a step? I mean, probably. He's over 30 years old, but I don't think that's really what's going on here, guys. I honestly think it's more so the detraction of players from the secondary and the instability that's caused. And I do think it's going to get a lot better because, simply put, Reed Blankenship returning, adding a, an absolute dog in Bayard to that secondary, and then finally getting, you know, veteran guys back and just competent guys back inside the nickel spot you know, and Bradley Roby and then Eli Ricks, even though that's not a natural fit for him, the fact that he's willing to go out there and fight and do the job, you know, Josiah Scott, who, you know, I think in the low zone is a player out there, just he can't match and carry, to be quite honest. Yeah, I, I think just that fact alone, don't lose hope here, guys. I think people are jumping off too soon, okay? I don't know that James Bradbury is going to have the effectiveness that he had during portions of last season, but I do expect adequate play to come back around into form, okay? I do think that Darius Slay, I think that James Bradbury, I think Reed Blankenship, I think that, you know, Kevin Bayard, and then having those guys in, in the slot, you know, the Roby, and then having, you know, Eli Ricks and Josiah Scott and, and having these guys kind of all come together to form the cohesion of the secondary, I think that's going to matter, and I think you're going to see the story change a little bit. Our coverage has been shaky so far this season. I think it's changing. I think that narrative is going to drastically change, if I'm going to be honest. All right, guys, I appreciate y'all's time and attention. If you want to learn more about the Philadelphia Eagles, I highly suggest that you click the video from yesterday. A lot of informative information there. All right, guys, I appreciate y'all. Peace. I'm out.